In this lesson, we'll take a look at transpose and how we can use it to modify our models. So this is going to be the lesson 08 start tool if you want to open that up. Otherwise, you can use your own meshes if you like. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is take the main mesh and take it down a couple of levels. So maybe down to level three or four. Okay. So let's say that we have a character like this that we want to start to pose up some of the limbs or even we have parts of our model that we want to modify. Now there's a way that we can do that using what's called transpose. And to activate this, all we need to do is instead of going to draw mode, we need to go to move, scale, or rotate. Okay, so we've got the subtool selected. And if I go to move, still in edit mode, you can see I get this little line, basically three connected circles, okay? And this is our action line, our transpose line here. And so what we can do is actually click and drag that out to define how we want to manipulate our geometry. Now in this case, we're using uh, move. So if we click that, it's gonna move everything because we've got everything uh, unmasked, basically. Okay, you can see up here, it's telling us that we can hold down uh, shift to a line. So if we want to just move it along the action line, we can do that as well. If we want to rotate, we get the same line, but now clicking on an end will rotate it around this end versus clicking on this end will rotate the model around this point. If we click and drag in the center, you can see how it rotates along that line. Okay, going to scale, we can scale by clicking and dragging on the end points. We can also scale non-uniformly by clicking and dragging on the center line. So it doesn't seem that useful at this point, and that's because everything, uh, as I said, is unmasked. So we need to start masking off areas, and that's just telling ZBrush that we don't want to affect a particular area, okay? Now, if we're just in draw mode, and we want to mask off part of our model, we would just hold down Control, and we could paint a mask onto our model. So in this case, the dark areas are gonna be masked off, so anything I do is not going to affect the dark polygons, okay? We can go ahead and click and drag to unmask. We can also, uh, if I hold down Control, click in the canvas and drag across here, and you can see that I can create sort of a marquee that masks all of those. If I click in the canvas, you're holding down Control, it'll invert the mask, okay? If we go into our tool palette, there's also a sub palette for masking. It's gonna be located right here, and so there's a lot of options in here for masking as well. We can look at the mask or not, we can invert the mask, we can mask all, or we can clear the mask, and so forth. So again, options in here for masking as well. So we wanna use masking in combination with the action line that we saw. So let's say that we wanna rotate one of these tentacles. So if we go to rotate, now right now we've drawn out an action line right here, but it's not really gonna do much because everything else is unmasked. So in rotate, we'll go ahead and hold down control, and I'm gonna drag across the model, okay? In the direction that I wanna mask, and this is called topological masking. So it's kind of masking down along this, and then when we go in and click and drag a line here, and we're in rotate, now we can rotate this, and you can see that that mask is preventing any of, this parts of, the, any of these parts of the model from moving. So I can really quickly rotate this if I wanna kind of mask out some other areas, hold down control, drag across the tentacle, and then we can click and drag our line, and you can see how we can manipulate that. You can also move it around, and again, the masking is not being affected. Now the mask is soft right now, so that's why you get such a nice, smooth transition there. Okay, and do the same thing down here. Okay, and you can kind of rotate that. So uh, using this in combination with your masking is gonna be really powerful. For instance, if we wanted to maybe uh, scale this, maybe this tentacle is a little bit too small, uh, we can go ahead, go to scale, and we'll create a mask there. And we'll create a line there, and we can scale this up or down. Again, you can see how the soft mask makes that transition much softer uh, than it might normally be. Okay, so this is uh, going to be a great option for posing models. If you have a character that needs to be posed, uh, you can do that. If you need to, for instance, move limbs and things, 
you can also move, just use it to reshape areas of your model. Okay, if I, you can see I can stretch it out if I just use move. Okay, and this is all based on the masked and unmasked areas uh, of your model. Okay, when you're done moving, scaling, or rotating using the action line and transpose, you can go back into draw mode. And now we're back to where we can go ahead and paint on the mask or we can go ahead and clear that mask off and all that details come through where we've added it. Okay, so that's just a, a quick look at using transpose. Okay, you can uh, activate that by going to move, scale, or rotate. You can see the hotkeys are located there. And then you want to make sure that you mask the areas that you're going to be moving, scaling, or rotating. And in this case, we use topological masking. It just means that we took the move, scale, or rotate, hold down control, and drag along the direction that you want to actually mask. And then you can drag out your line and move it around. Okay. And so that is a quick look at that. The next thing that uh, we want to look at is Z spheres. The Z spheres are going to allow us to get geometry uh, in ZBrush to create our own geometry in ZBrush without having to bring in an external file or use primitives. So we'll take a look at that process in the next lesson.